What's going on YouTube? Uberman here. So I did a, a very personal video. I don't know how long ago it's been, maybe four or five days. And, uh, you know, part of the reason I did that video was, was just selfishness. Um, I felt like I had some things I needed to get off my chest. Didn't really have anybody uh, to talk to. So I decided to talk to you guys. I felt like, uh, I felt like talking would help me feel a little bit better you know, to just get it out. And on top of that, I really felt like I owed you guys, uh, guys and gals, my, my followers, my viewers, a proper introduction. Um, I know that most of the stuff on this channel is business and, and that's how it should be, but uh, I, I just couldn't get over the urge to really let you all know who I am, where I came from, and uh, kind of how I got to where I am today. Um, so with that being said, I honestly expected a whole lot of a whole lot of negativity to come from that video, um, and I was prepared for it. But the exact opposite happened. I I received an outpouring of support and uh, just great, wonderful comments. And I want to let you know, I took the time to read all of the comments. I answered as many as I could, but the comments they continue to flood in so quickly it's overwhelming. There's no possible way I can keep up with all the comments, but I absolutely read all of them. I answered as many as I could. So I decided, you know, maybe from time to time, I'll do just a short video um, talking about some of the things I've gone through, because what I realized from making that video is that a lot of you have been through a lot of similar things as me. Um, we have quite a few things in common that we didn't have before. And that makes this channel a little more personal to me and hopefully to you as well. Um, it, it's good to know you're not the only one. And I don't know about you ladies, um, but as far as men go, speaking from my own perspective, of course, I, I'm not trying to speak for all men, but the majority of men, we don't come out and talk about how our mommies didn't love us Um or how our daddies beat us because it shows weakness and men are not allowed to show weakness. And a lot of you men out there know exactly what I'm talking about. I was raised the same way. Men don't cry, you know, six year old boy getting beat up by his dad. I'm crying because it hurts and I'm being told to shut my pie hole. Men don't cry. I wasn't a man. I was a boy. Um, and to this day, if something hurts me enough, I will cry, and I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed to admit it, and you shouldn't be either. Let me tell you what happens. This is this is one of the things I worked through in my domestic violence classes. I, ha I had to overcome what I was brought up being taught, which was men don't cry. Men don't cry it was beaten into me, and it's wrong. I've taught my kids the same thing. Boy, girl, doesn't matter. It's okay to cry. If you're hurt, cry. If you got to release some negative energy within you, cry. Get it out. Because I can tell you from experience, holding that shit in, it's a disaster waiting to happen. It builds up this, this, this darkness inside of you. It's almost an evil feeling. It just grows and grows and it manifests. The longer you keep it in, the worse it gets until one day something sets you off and you pop. And when that happens, depending on what you do, could change the course of your life forever and not in a positive way. So it really surprised me how many of you have gone through sexual abuse, um, mental abuse, physical abuse. There's so many kinds of abuse these days. I didn't even realize I was going through so many of them. You know, all I knew is I got hit and I was yelled at a lot. And I definitely feel a much stronger connection to, uh, to you guys that took the time to watch the video and comment and tell me about some of the things you've been through. And, uh, you know, it is difficult to talk about. It absolutely is. And uh, that's another reason why I'm doing it. It's not easy to get on camera and tell 40,000 plus people how fucked up your life was. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm not blaming my family for the hard times that I went through when I was older. You know, I made my own decisions and I'm sure the way I was brought up didn't help me any, but ultimately it was my decision 
to get help. I could have just walked through the classes, breezed through them, and not actually wanted the help, but I did. And I highly recommend if any of you have anger management problems, you got a bad temper, hair trigger like I used to, I highly recommend you get help for that. Watching this video isn't going to help you. Uh, talking about it isn't going to help. There are things you need to learn, things that will help you walk away from bad situations. There are tactics to de-escalate situations, and you don't have to. You don't have to use your fists. Most fights. Hey, don't get me wrong. I'm not. I'm not some saint. I'm not sitting here saying I don't get mad. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, I get mad. I get angry, but I learned how to deal with it. I've learned how to control it. And that's the trick. Anger has a nasty habit of controlling you. And it's got to be the other way around. You have to know how to control your anger. And that is something you're going to have to talk to somebody about. You're going to have to go through some classes. You're going to have to take it seriously. And first and foremost, you have to admit that you have a problem and you need to get help. It's not okay to hit people, men or women. It's not. Now, with that being said, if I cannot de-escalate a situation, if a fight is imminent, am I going to stand there and let someone knock the holy hell out of me? No. No, I'll fight back. Whether I win or lose doesn't matter. I'll fight back, but only if I have exhausted every other option and there's nothing left for me to do. Otherwise, I'm usually really good at de-escalating situations and being able to prevent a fight that a lot of people probably would have been throwing blows in. I highly recommend, if you've got an anger problem, you go looking to get some help. And I highly recommend the YM or YWCA. That's the place I went through. It took over 12 months, but it worked. Um, obviously, I sought counseling. Um, and it was it was kind of crazy. My first session with a counselor, she cried. It was just the first session, like one hour. One hour. And she was in tears. And I remember she told me, Mr. Shear." You are a miracle. She said, people that have endured what you have endured, that go through the things you've gone through, don't typically turn into successful, productive um, human beings. They turn into killers and, and rapists and, and thieves. And, you know, they, they kind of they kinda turn toward the dark side, if you will. And I did. That's the thing. I, I did turn towards the dark side. I, I did get into my share of trouble. I absolutely did. And then I got tired of it. One might say I grew up. I got fed up with that life. Let me tell you guys some things you don't, you don't know about me. I was involved with people that were running drugs, meth. I've been a getaway driver. I'm a damn good driver. I've been involved with a lot of illegal activities in my past. And it's nothing short of a miracle that I don't have some kind of a rap sheet that prevents me from doing the things I'm able to do today. And I want to say I'm not proud of the shit that I used to do. Not at all. See, back then, it was a way of releasing all of this pent up aggression and anger and is like fuck the man type thing. And I'm very lucky that, that I'm in the position I'm in today. I'm very thankful that I didn't end up in a lot of trouble over, over the things I was involved in. Now keep in mind, you're talking 20 years ago. <laughs> it's kind of hard to, to wrap my head around that. Uh, you know, 20, between 20 and, and 17 and 20 years ago, um, I was into some pretty bad stuff and I'm lucky to be here right now so I can talk to you. And so many of you commented and, 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 and shared some of your stories, telling me some of the things you've been through. And it really hit home to me because you know, you're not alone. Everybody knows you're not alone. We've all been through something, right? At least most of us have. But when you see so many other people that can relate to you, it feels good. It's a community. It's almost, <laughs> I don't want to call it a dysfunctional family, but our commonalities 
kind of bring us together. What you've been through, what I've been through. It's something, if you're willing, if you're willing to talk about it, you don't even have to make a video. Just comment. Comment on it. I'll read it. I may not be able to answer everything, but I'll read it. And so will others. And that gives us a sense of community. It gives us a feeling of family that maybe some of us are lacking. It may not be a commonality people would want to have with one another, but unfortunately, this is the reality of the situation we're in. You're not alone. And after making that video, it made me feel really good. It really did. It hurt to talk about that stuff, but when I saw how many of you were sharing some of your stories, it doesn't make me feel good that you had to go through the things that you did any more than I feel good about the things I had to go through. But it made me feel good that you were able and willing to talk about it and that it gave you hope. Several of you said that it gave you, it gave you real hope. And I guess that's kind of the purpose of this video. And it's not one of those things, hey, if I can do it, you can do it. Everybody can do it. Not everybody can do it. Um, not everybody is capable of moving past their past. Um, some people are trapped in a time warp. They can't break it. But I've been through some very extreme shit from, as far as I know, my first memory. And I'm still going through it today. Which reminds me, I have court on the 13th of December over my sister taking my son. Um, I can't talk any more about the case than that, and it's going to probably be a while before I can. Um, right, right at Thanksgiving, you know, they call DHS on me and, and try to report me. Luckily, DHS threw the case out. Now it's coming up on Christmas, and I have to, I have to stand in front of a judge. Believe me when I tell you, I'm going through some shit. All right, I'm going through some really serious shit. There's nothing I think more serious to a parent than than losing your child, especially when you didn't you didn't do anything. You did everything that you could do. You did everything the right way, everything you were taught and told and trained to do, and it wasn't enough. So, I'm sure a lot of you are going through your own shit too. And if it helps you to share it, please share it. I promise you, I will read every comment, even if I can't respond to it. I'll definitely read it. And others will too. And that's why I've decided to continue this video, this, this series. I'll share some of the shit I went through. You share your stuff. We can all talk about it. And we can kind of form a bond between us over the stuff that we've been through. It's been hard. It's been really difficult to get myself where I am today. Being raised in such abusive environments, sexually, physically, mentally, verbally, um, it's difficult to move past that. And it's difficult to be productive. But I'm, I'm kind of the proof in the pudding here. You can do it. You can. It's going to take a lot of work. It's easy to go grab some dope. It's easy to grab a bottle and have a drink. It's easy to try to drown yourself in the euphoria that drugs and alcohol can bring you. And don't think I haven't been there before too. But again, you got to grow up. Life is the most precious gift we will ever have. And it is too damn short to waste your life doing dope and drinking yourself to death. Believe me, death is going to come soon enough for all of us. You know, some sooner than others. You don't need to tempt fate. You don't need to provoke death. It's not worth it. Pick yourself up. I think the first step is to realize... You can't let the people that hurt you in your past continue controlling you. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're letting what people... And believe me, the people that hurt you, you think they give two shits about you today? You think they give a fuck that they hurt you? They don't. They don't. They probably don't even think about you or think about what they've done to you anymore. They've moved on, moved past it. 
You're the one stuck in the time warp. You're the one suffering. By doing that, you're allowing them to maintain a sick kind of control over you. You got to get up. You got to get past it. Or you're never going to amount to anything. You're never going to be successful. And I don't mean success is in money. Success is not measured in numbers. Success is not measured in dollars. Success is measured by the quality of the life that you live. Life is too damn short. Make the best of it. Now, now that we got that out of the way, that's, that's my little speech. And I mean every word of it. You know, I want to talk real quick about toxic relationships. Believe you me, I've been in my share of toxic relationships and I've learned a couple things and I want to share that with you today. I'm not necessarily talking about your girlfriend or your fiance or your boyfriend or your wife or your husband. Toxic relationships can be your mother, your father, stepfather, your sisters, your stepsisters, half-sister, half-brother, uncles, aunts, grandmas, grandpas, it can be anybody. And it has been, believe it or not, it has been my own personal experience that the majority of the toxic relationships I've been in have been with my own biological family. So let me tell you what I did. I sent, I'm going to read this to you. I sent my mother, my own mother, my biological mother, who I talked about in the last video, who I, I love to death, regardless of the things I had to go through, the things I endured, the, the fact that she never really did anything to help me. That is my mother, and I will love her till the day I die. So here's what I told her. I'm not going to get into the conversation, but I said, no worries either way. I've done it on my own from day one, and I'll finish this on my own. I'm walking away from this family I was born into. I'll always love you, and I will always miss who you used to be, but I can't continue on pretending anymore. This isn't what family is supposed to be like, and I wish you the very best. Now, you don't have to, you don't have to text your mom or your dad and say, hey, F you, you SOB, I hate you. In fact, I don't recommend doing that at all. I don't hate my mother. I don't even hate my father, and he's the one that abused me. I love them very much. But they're toxic relationships. My mother doesn't come around. She's not involved with my kids. You don't hear from her unless it's a holiday. You know, that's the way my family is, and it's a toxic environment. Families should not only be around each other or talk to each other when it's a holiday or when an emergency comes up. It's not a good environment. That's not a family. I have, in my experience, found that you can find a normal... Okay, let's not kid each other. A normal family I don't think exists, but you can find family through people that you're not even related to I got a guy, well, we don't talk much anymore, but till the day I die, I'll consider him my brother. His name is Daryl Cook. Me and him used to be like this. Like, we were, we were close, like brothers. And let me tell you something. That man will be my brother till the day I die. We're not even related. We're separated by, like, 700 miles. I have been treated better by people that I just met through different walks of life. People that cared about me in the capacity of a mother or the capacity of a father or the capacity of a brother or the capacity of a sister. More so than I have in my own life and through my own family. You're not married to your mom, your dad, your brother, sister. You're not married to the family you got. I don't know where that idea gets drilled into our head, but family is not everything. <laughs> it's truly not. There is a time and a place where it's necessary to walk away from these toxic relationships. Move on. Find other people. Find a new family. And I know that that probably sounds really shitty. And I know the whole blood is thicker than water. I'm here to tell you I have experienced firsthand. No, it's not. No, I've been thrown under the bus and burned by my family 
more times than I've been burned by complete strangers, outsiders, friends that have fucked me over. It's my own family that has hurt me more than anybody else ever has. And I'm willing to bet there's a lot of you that know, that know what I'm talking about. You've experienced the same thing. You feel the same way. If you're involved in a toxic relationship, I don't give a shit who it is. If it's your own mother, your brother, your sister, you got to get away from it. You got to walk away. You got to remove yourself from toxic environments or you will never heal. You'll never be able to move forward. You'll never be able to have a healthy mentality, to have a healthy life, healthy relationships, if you continue to keep yourself inside of toxic environments. Remove yourself from the situation and you will find a weight has been lifted off of your shoulders. Now, do I hope someday my mom and I could work things out? My dad and I all, oh sure, sure, my sisters, of course. That's my family. I wish things could be different. Unfortunately, it's not. That's not to say it can't happen someday, but the first step is to remove yourself from the situation and get some clarity. So at the end of the day, the point of this video is to tell you you need to remove the toxic people from your life. Get rid of the toxic relationships. Get yourself some clarity. You'll feel a whole lot better. Believe me, you will. And if you don't have anybody to talk to, if you don't have anybody that shares uh, some of these fucked up things we've been through in the past, with share them here. Share them right here if you're comfortable with that. Um, you're not. You're not alone. Neither am I. We share a commonality with a lot of people. We just don't realize it. And talking about it's good. It's okay to be hurt. It's also okay to get over it. Once you can accept the fact that you're hurt, you can start healing. And it feels good. Believe me. All right. So we're going we're gonna to stop with all that right there. And, uh, you know, we'll get into some more later on. Um, I'll share a couple more things that happened to me in my childhood. And we'll, we'll cut this video off. Um, do any of you know what a weed whacker is? I'm not talking about a weed eater. I'm talking about a weed whacker. Kind of like a sling blade. It's a double-edged blade on a stick. Um, take a shovel handle and then put a straight blade about this long on the bottom of it, double-edged. When we lived in the country, we had these bamboo things that used to grow all down the side of our house by the field. And my dad would make me, with no gloves, mind you, this old rotting stick with this rusted double-edged blade. You literally take the stick and the blade and you swing it. And believe me, it's hard at first, but once you get the hang of it, man, you start knocking them uh, bamboo sticks out of the way. You just once, twice, once, twice. You do that until you knock all the weeds down. <laughs> I mowed a lot of grass and uh, a lot of bamboo that way. I remember one time, it was the middle of summertime, I was, I was burning up. I, I was so hot and I couldn't come inside until the work was done. It was a lot of work. There was a lot of bamboo that had to be cut down. I was so thirsty, I went over to the barbed wire fence where the horses were. We had an old bathtub that we used as a trough for their water. And it was always green. It was disgusting. And as I'm sure you can imagine, it was green with like, uh, I don't know what the green was. Um, it was gross, you know, kind of like seaweed, but not seaweed, just lots of green and there was black, there was dirt and, and it was what the horses drank out of. I was so thirsty, I knew I couldn't go in to get a drink. I went over to horses trough, stuck my head through the barbed wire fence and I literally drank that trough water like it was a bottle of Dasani. It was, looking back, that was so disgusting, but I was so thirsty. It was, it was, it was fine. Um, I just remember being so hot, I felt like I was going to die. But even then, I wouldn't step foot in that house. I knew better. I remember digging fence post holes. Those things got to be dug deep. You've got this, again, you've got two wooden handles and these like blades on the bottom. When you pull the handles, uh, it closes it. When you push the handles, it opens it and you smash it into the ground, pull it, pull the dirt out and just keep doing it. He had me dig 
an entire line of fence post holes like we were going to be building a new fence. When I got done, he came out and inspected it, approved it, then told me to fill it all back in. He said the worst thing he could do for me was make me feel like I had accomplished something. So he wanted to let me know that I had wasted my entire day digging fence post holes for absolutely nothing. <laughs> I could kind of laugh about it now. He, he was an asshole. He really was. He was a horrible parent. Um, uh, there's so much more I could talk about. There really is. But I just want to share a couple more things with you. And uh, let's go ahead and get out of here. But if you like these videos, if you want to hear more about them, more of my experiences, which we'll probably get into next time, assuming you know you guys want to hear about it, uh, comment below and tell me what you think. If you like this little series that I'm doing, we'll keep on until you guys get tired of it. And if it helps you, you know, please let me know because it makes me feel like I'm doing something, something good, something helpful, something important. And uh, you know, until next time, it is Saturday night, so obviously stay safe. Hopefully you have a profitable weekend. And uh, yeah, be sure to like, comment, please comment, and subscribe to this channel. Stay safe out there, guys and gals.